You know, I've made over like 200 of these videos and I still have no idea how to start them. Every time I go to write these intros, I'm always just like, Huh? So a few months ago, I made a video on Diary of a Wimpy Kid, just about how like utterly bizarre that movie was. I mean, it was actually a lot funnier than I thought it was going to be, but also like, that's a weird movie. But all the same, turns out there are three more of these movies, or two more, depending on who you ask. So I thought, why not check out the second Diary of a Wimpy Kid movie, Roderick Rules. But before that, really quick, this video is brought to you by Underlucky Stars. So Underlucky Stars is a company that makes these really nice star maps that show the exact unique alignment of the constellations at whatever specific time and place you want. It's a fantastic gift you can give someone for any kind of special day or moment that you want to remember. Like, you could say, here's what the stars were like on the night of a first date, or here's what the stars were like the moment you were born, or like, remember that one time junior year when you got sick on stage during the school musical? Well, here's what the rest of the universe was doing at that time. And also, just to be clear, the star map creation and charting methods they use have been confirmed by NASA astrophysicists. Physicists, so it's not just like a bunch of random lines and dots or whatever, you know? They also support the International Dark Sky Association to help preserve the night sky from satellites and light pollution and things like that. So these confirmed accurate star maps are a great surprise gift for anyone. I even got one for Kelsey to remember our first date, because I'm such a good boyfriend, right honey? If I have to sit through any more of those Disney Channel movies, I swear I'm gonna- Yeah, okay, glad you like it. Love you too. Right now, Under Lucky Stars is offering all of you an exclusive 10% discount on any order with the code Alex Myers. So, just go to underluckystars.com slash Alex Myers to get your your own unique star map today. Okay, back to the show. Okay, so starting right off, once again, we have our main character, Greg, breaking the fourth wall and talking to us about whatever's on his mind this time around. Let me start by saying that having a brother is really overrated. Probably always says he wishes he had a brother. Boy, do I wish I could give him one of mine. I've looked into it, and unfortunately, it's not legal. Okay, okay, I'm sorry, I just gotta interrupt for a second here, but like, what's going on with this kid's cowlick? Does this dude just wake up from a coma? Roderick is the king of laziness, except when it comes to torturing me. <laughs> <laughs> My mom has started writing an advice column for the local paper. She wrote an article last week about how your brothers will always be there for you. Now, I will say, thankfully, that's only as true as you want it to be. But all the same, finally, it's the first day of school, and that morning, Greg's mom has a little something to share with everyone, you know, as moms always do. We gotta go, Mom. Later, Mom. Yeah, see you, honey. Okay, okay, wait, hold on, wait a second. I need a moment for a family meeting. Oh no, trust me, nothing good ever happens when mom goes to family meeting, all right? It's either gonna be her sharing way too much information about things you never wanted to know about, or just like the most passive aggressive backhanded conversation you've ever heard in your life. Okay kids, today we're gonna to talk about something your dad does that I don't like very much, but instead of talking to him about it, I'm just gonna wrap it up in a metaphor that makes no sense. Things between the two of you have really gotten out of hand. So you need to get to know each other. You need to spend more time together. What? Ha ha ha. <laughs> mom bucks. For every hour that you spend together without fighting, earn a mom buck, which you can then trade in for one real dollar. Wait a second, hold on. So the exchange rate on mom bucks is one to one? Why not just give him a dollar? <laughs> Why you gotta add like four steps? But yeah, so this whole mom bucks thing lasts about maybe half the movie or so, and then just kind of randomly disappears. Like most of those weird schemes your parents try to do to hopefully turn you into like a semi-normal person. Like when I was about Greg's age, my parents and teachers were always telling me about how like, you gotta stop being a smart aleck like, and making jokes all the time about everything. Cause one day you're gonna have to grow up and get a job and what kind of career could you possibly have just making fun of everything all the time? Well, who's laughing now, Mr. Butler? But all the same, as per last time, between the three bully kids trying to skin him alive, him sacrificing some kindergartens to a local eldritch god, and getting the cheese touch, somehow Greg survived the sixth grade. Most kids hate it when summer ends. But I have to say, right now, school is starting to look pretty good. I'm so glad that's not me this year. It's a little hard, a little hard. <gasps> Greg, look who's in our class. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, uh, over the summer, Greg and Rowley went to the roller rink, you know, like all the cool kids do, and ran into a new girl in town, Holly. Who is that? Her name is Holly Hills. She just moved here. Because I guess little Greg's just bouncing from blonde to blonde? Okay, I see how it is. Well, whatever happened to Angie? Hmm? She's probably still sitting under those bleachers to this very day. She's got her best beret on, you know, sitting there reading a book called You're Not Pretentious, Everyone's Just Jealous of You. A Teenager's Guide to Ending Up With No Friends. But anyway, so yeah, this is Holly, the new girl, who does literally nothing the entire movie and serves no purpose. Although I guess she is the motivation for Greg running around a nursing home in his underwear. But don't worry, we'll get to that one later. For now, it's Greg's first day of school and everything's off to a great start. What's going on? This is my seat. <laughs> Okay, let's start again. What are your names? Patty Farrell. Two R's, two L's. No one asked, Patty! Greg Heffley. Greg Heffley. Would you be 
related to Roderick Heffley? Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, man. This 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 scene is speaking to me right now. Being the fourth Meyer son, okay? Like, I was always having teachers and upperclassmen just being like, Oh, jeez, man, there's another one of you? How repressed were your parents when they were kids? Now, once school's over, Greg goes home, dejected, because he'll be living in Roderick's shadow for the rest of his entire life. He won't slip through an entire day. Do you have an amazing talent that you'd like to share? Today, Plainview City Council announced a brand new local contest, Plainview's Most Talented. Top prize is $1,000, and of course, the admiration of your friends and neighbors. This is huge. I gotta call the band, we we gotta practice. And so this sets in motion the rest of the movie where Roderick wants to get his band in the city talent show so they can maybe get some money, but hopefully get scouted and get like a record deal and stuff, you know, because someone out there has just got to recognize the talent and infinite marketability of a band called Loaded Diaper, you know what I mean? But anyway, so as per usual for the Heffley boys, Roderick is just obsessed with ruining Greg's life. One thing leads to another and they get in a huge fight in the middle of church and gosh darn, the moms just had it with these kids. <laughs> about being civil to one another. Well, you have blown it big time. Never been more embarrassed. You can kiss Rockin' Rapids goodbye. You two will stay here together all weekend and work out your differences. And don't have anybody over this weekend. And so, of course, Roderick immediately throws a party and invites all of his cool high school friends like 3D Glasses Guy, Cool Girl by the Coat Rack, and everyone's favorite, Dead Guy Behind the Couch. Now, Roderick tries to lock Greg in the basement, but then Greg calls Rally, who has the coolest football phone I've ever seen. I mean, phones are just so boring now, but like, we used to have football phones, Garfield phones. I'm telling you, ever since we all stopped using Garfield phones, humanity's just gone downhill, okay? The evidence speaks for itself. Anyway, so long story short, Rowley comes over, and now he and Greg are hanging out at Roderick's cool party. As long as they don't act like total dweebs. We play so loud, we actually to make people's eardrums bleed. You? <laughs> I mean, not really. <laughs> I think your brother likes her! You're not making this easy, Rowley. Did you somebody ask say dance? Break it down! Rowley, no, don't! <laughs> Dead. No, wait, man, what do you mean? You can't mess with a chubby kid to throw the freak out. Wait, hold on. Why are they still acting like this? We've been down this road already back in the first movie. There was the whole Zooey Mama thing, the Mother Son dance. I thought we learned these lessons already. Anyway, so thanks to Rally, the party's a huge hit. I think it's get a little crazy, as you can see here from the ambiguously branded soda tower, and then this guy in the back just being like, I didn't know Roderick had a tramp stamp. Kids spraying whipped cream directly into their mouths. <laughs> it's okay. Sure hope someone doesn't call the cops on these kids. Until, of course, the next morning. the Hefley residence. Please leave a message. Hey guys, Manny's sick. We're on our way home. See you in an hour. So they clean everything up in record time, and Roderick desperately has to remove his eyeliner for some reason, even though he wears it all the time anyway. Ah, crap, I gotta take off my party eyeliner and put my school eyeliner back on before anyone notices. Now, also, during the party, someone wrote on the bathroom door, which means now they have to completely replace it with a different door that they somehow just miraculously find in the basement. But there's one little problem. We're dead, and if they find out... Shh. So now Roderick and Greg have a secret just between them. And so for now, all the hazing and bullying has stopped. And as long as their parents don't figure things out, everything's gonna be fine. I kinda wish you hadn't told me. Would you understand? Roderick isn't beating me up anymore. But how are they not going to notice that the lock's gone? Please, they're like 40. They can barely remember our names. You know, I was gonna make fun of the fact that Greg thinks 40 is like so old, you know, but like I'm in my early 30s and last week I thought it was Tuesday, three days in a row, so enjoy these videos while you can, everybody, because I don't know how much time I have left. Also, slight tension here, but like I thought Angie was a little try hard with how she dressed, but like what the hook is Holly wearing right now? What is this? Anyway, so as you may recall, Roderick is trying to get his band to win the talent show thing, and to do this, he's brought on a new guitar player to really take the band to the next level. Roderick mm. tells me that you're a professional musician. What? It doesn't sound like a cakewalk, right? No. Why don't you tell Roderick, uh, give him a picture of just how challenging it is. No, on the road, it's all burgers and fries and pizza. And then you gotta deal with the fans, especially the girls. Oh. Yeah. It's definitely not for everyone. Well, you get girls? Well, you get pizza? I love horses. But anyway, so one day, eventually, as parents always do, they figure out that something might have happened while they were gone that weekend. What happened to the lock? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. There was a lock on this door. Um, 
<laughs> I don't think so. Roderick, I've lived in this house for 10 years. I've locked that door 10,000 times because sometimes it's my only moment of privacy of the day. And no, it's not related to the fact that that's where I keep all the electric toothbrushes, okay? Do not change the subject, Roderick. And so after some wonderful gaslighting about the bathroom door, their mom decides to check out Greg's story. You know, just to make sure everything matches up. Greg? Two words. Bathroom. Door. It was Roderick. He made me use his idea. He had the party. Someone wrote on the door, so we had to change it. I knew it. Okay, but like, let's just stop for one second here. Why exactly are they so worried that because there's no bathroom lock on the door, their parents are gonna find out they had a party? What kind of party involves removing the lock on a bathroom door? Like, there's at least a million reasons why this could have happened. But all the same, Greg convinces his mom to not let Roderick know that he told her the truth, like an idiot, so Roderick won't get mad and go back to giving him swirlies and, you know, strapping C4 to his bed while he's asleep. And it works, for the most part. You didn't buckle. Deny, 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 right? You know, you may not be half as lame as I thought you were. So now Greg and Roderick have a secret, sort of. Greg and his mom have a secret, and Greg and Roderick's dad is a little too into the Civil War, if you ask me. But anyway, so now Roderick and Greg actually are sort of kind of friends, I guess? But you learn the secrets to an easy life. Rule number one, don't be good at something you don't want to do. Rule number two, always lower mom and dad's expectations. Rule number three, never do something when someone else can do it for you. I mean, this man's just spitting straight truth over here. But all the same, Greg and Roger keep hanging out and bonding over pranking people outside of a gas station with fake vomit. Just dude things. And it looks like everything's going pretty well until their dad wants to show some friends some Civil War reenactment photos. I'm telling you, something's up with this guy. There's nothing, nothing special. Oh my God. Roderick, can you explain what you're doing in this photo? Yeah, what kind of sad party is this, Roderick? You broke the one rule I gave you and this is the best you could do? Diet soda and conga lines? What are you, seven? I can't believe that you had a party. Greg, you told me it was a couple of kids, a band rehearsal. Wait, Susan, you knew about this? Oh, so now you care about honesty and working as a team, huh? Yeah, okay, I see how it is. Everybody gather up, it's time for a family meeting. And so now the truth is finally out there, which had nothing at all to do with the bathroom door. Why were they all so obsessed with the bathroom door for like half the movie? But all the same, now Roderick and Greg are in trouble. Your father and I have talked and we've decided on your punishment. Greg, you're grounded for two weeks. Roderick, you may only drive to and from school for the next month. As the ringleader, you are also grounded for a month. We're also not allowing you to perform in the talent show. Oh, sorry, wrong button. How do you work this thing? Oh, here it is. And also on top of that, their parents make them stay with their grandpa at his nursing home for the weekend. This is the weirdest punishment I've ever seen. Now, while they're there, Greg runs into Holly because turns out she also has a designated old person and they get to talking and find out that they have so much in common. You know, like they both wear jeans and uh, she's at least four feet taller than him because that's what middle school is like. I mean, I'll tell you, being a boy in like seventh grade, you go to the spring dance or whatever. And it's just like Shadow the Colossus over there. But most importantly, Greg and Holly both wear Chuck Taylors, which is how you know they're cool, but like in a relatable way. Anyway, that night, Greg writes in his diary about how in love with Holly he is or whatever. And guess who finds out about that real quick? I've never believed in fate or destiny or whatever until now. Things are finally starting to go my way. I thought being a grandpa's was punishment, but really it was destiny that Holly was here too. My luck had finally changed. Aww. <laughs> Give it back, Roger. Yeah, so this is why we saw Greg running around in the nursing home in his underwear earlier, so. Hope that was worth the wait for you. Now skipping ahead to the end of the movie here. Greg and Roderick's parents make them go to the talent show that Roderick wanted to be in. Roderick finds out that his band went and replaced him with a new drummer and they're gonna do the show without him. Now Greg sees all this and decides that despite everything, he doesn't want Roderick to give up on his dreams. Which is fine because the universe is gonna crush him for you anyway, so don't worry about it. You need to let Roderick play in the talent show tonight. Greg, we've been over this. He needs to learn a lesson. His band is playing. Without him and it's not fair. Mm -hmm, and I'm sure that's very hard on him, but I can't go back on the punishment. You let Roderick Playing the talent show. I'll do the magic thing with Rowley. 
Oh yeah, this probably doesn't make any sense, does it? You see, Rowley wanted to do a magic thing for the talent show, but Greg thought it was lame, even though the entire first movie is about him learning that Rowley's actually cool, and everything he does makes him more popular. So yeah, real glad you learned all those life lessons last year, Greg. But anyway, so in the end, Roderick gets back with his band, and they play their smash hit single, Exploded Diaper. Yeah, hard to believe this band hasn't taken off yet, you know what I mean? Greg does a magic show with Rowley, and it goes super well. Even Holly's into it. Oh my gosh, you guys did great. That was really funny. The unit chart or the performance? Both. Yeah, okay, I'm just gonna stop you right there, Holly. Now, it's a well-known fact that girls are really into guys who do magic. But don't get too attached, okay? It's probably just gonna toss you aside like you did with Angie. And so, Roderick and Greg make up, and everyone's best friends, and that's pretty much the end of the movie. So, back when I watched the first one, I said how it was a lot funnier and smarter than I thought it would be. I mean, like, yeah, it's definitely a movie made for 12-year-olds, but, like, it had a lot in it that I feel like the kids' parents could also appreciate. But this movie's just straight up a kid's movie, okay? Like, all the adults are suddenly real dumb, and none of the jokes land at all. Can you bring me back a cobra? I want to teach it to dance. What was General Grant doing on the thermostat? I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense because the second movie has a different director and writing team, but like, man, it really shows.